Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and I brought my polar bears and thermometers and Bigfoot, because I want to do a science experiment of sorts. I want to test to see if all the temperatures in this range behind me are about the same, or if there's a significant variation. So let's see what happens when I put the polar bears and their thermometers in their place. Now, let's just leave that for a few minutes and just see what happens. I'm gonna go get my cell phone. Now, some of you may say, well, what kind of scientific experiment is that? Every one of these polar bears or Bigfoot were parked in a different location. They all had different thermometers. None of them were calibrated to this air. And so this is a poor experiment because not all the thermometers and the sightings are exactly correct. Well, what do you think about all the temperature monitors in the world? Do you think they're all sighted correctly? Because you're wrong. Do you think they're all well maintained? Because they're not. <clears throat> and do you know that when you read on NASA's website about the surface air temperature, they say that they would need to have 50 foot stacks of thermometers located all over the place in a place like this to accurately measure the surface air temperature. And in fact, they also say there's no common definition of what the surface air temperature is. And this is why they use what's called a global temperature anomaly, which is not actually a temperature measurement. It's a metric. It's an averaged and adjusted metric. So I'm going to read to you now a section from the NASA site about surface air temperature. And then I want you to think about whether or not claiming that we can keep the temperature of the Earth below 1.5 degrees Celsius global average warming, whether that makes sense or not. So follow me inside and I'll read it off the computer. Okay, so now we're at the computer. Let's have a look at what NASA has to say about absolute surface air temperature and that was the experiment that I was trying to show you outside with the polar bears and the thermometers that within even a very close distance outside surface temperatures can vary quite a lot. So what does NASA have to say? The elusive absolute surface air temperature, SAT. The GIS temp, that means Goddard Institute of Space Sciences, their temperature database, their analysis concerns only temperature anomalies, not absolute temperature. So when you look at NASA GIS temp readings, they're not temperature readings. They're temperature anomalies, and this will explain a bit more. Temperature anomalies are computed relative to the base period of 1951 to 1980. The reason to work with anomalies rather than absolute temperature is that absolute temperature varies markedly in short distances, while monthly or annual temperature anomalies are representative of a much larger region. Indeed, as we have shown, 
and they reference a paper <coughs> that temperature anomalies are strongly correlated out to distances of the order of about a thousand kilometers. So a thousand kilometers, that's about the distance from Edmonton to Vancouver. That's pretty big. So it says here, question, what do we exactly mean by SAT, by surface air temperature? And the author here from Nassau says, I doubt that there's general agreement about how to answer that question. Even at the same location, the temperature near the ground may be very different from the temperature five feet above the ground and different again from 10 feet or 50 feet above the ground. Particularly in the presence of vegetation, say a rainforest, the temperature above the vegetation may be very different from the temperature below the vegetation or below the top of the vegetation. A reasonable suggestion might be to use the average temperature of the first 50 feet of air, either above ground or above the top of the vegetation. And to measure the surface air temperature, we have to agree on what it is. And as far as I know, the author says, no such standard has been suggested or generally adopted. So even if the 50 foot standard were adopted, I cannot imagine that a weather station would build a 50 foot stack of thermometers to be able to find the true surface air temperature at its location. That's interesting. And then it goes on to say, well, what do we mean by the daily mean surface air temperature, SAT? Well, again, there's no universally accepted correct answer. Should we note the temperature every six hours and then report the mean, or you know, the average? Or should we do it every two hours, hourly? Or should we have a machine recorded every second and simply take the average of the highest and lowest temperatures of the day? On some days, the various methods may lead to drastically different results. And of course, you can think about that quite clearly, like especially in Alberta, if you have a nice fall day as we had today, and then maybe suddenly a uh, storm blows in, either rain or cold, freezing rain or snow perhaps, and then maybe the next day we get a Chinook. So you could get extremely different temperatures. <coughs> <clears throat> and then it says, well, what surface air temperature do local media report? Well, that is a good question because we get reports in the, in the weather reports all the time saying, well, today it's 8 degrees in Calgary or 1 degree in Edmonton or minus 30 in Fort McMurray. So what, what are they actually reporting then? So they say here that the media report on the reading of one particular thermometer of a nearby weather station. So this temperature may be very different from the true surface area temperature, even at that location, and certainly has nothing to do with the true regional surface air temperature. To measure the true regional surface air temperature, we'd have to use many 50-foot stacks of thermometers distributed evenly over a whole area or region, and that's obviously a practical impossibility. Yeah, sounds like it. So if the reported surface air temperatures are not the true surface air temperatures, why are they still useful? Okay, this makes sense to me anyway. The reported temperature is truly meaningful only to a person who happens to visit the weather station at the precise moment when the reported temperature is measured. In other words, to nobody. <laughs> However, in addition to the surface air temperature, the reports usually also mention whether the current temperature is unusually high or low and how much it differs from sort of the normal temperature. And that inf information, which is the anomaly, is meaningful for the whole region. And that's true. You know, when you get the temperature readings in the morning, when you wake up, you think, oh, maybe I should wear a coat today. Maybe I should wear a parka. Oh, look, it's so nice out. I can just go out in a t-shirt. Um, 
And then they go on to say also if we hear a temperature, say, of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 21 degrees Celsius, we instinctively translate that into hot or cold. But our translation key depends on the season and the region. The same temperature may be hot in winter and cold in July, <clears throat> since by hot we always mean hotter than normal. And we all translate absolute temperatures automatically into anomalies whether we're aware of it or not. And then the question is, if surface air temperatures cannot be measured, how are surface air temperature maps created? Well, this can only be done with the help of computer models, the same models that are used to create daily weather, daily weather forecasts. We may start out the model with the few observed data that are available, and then we fill in the rest with guesses, also called extrapolations. And then we let the model run long enough so that the initial guesses no longer matter but not too long in order to avoid that the inaccuracies of the model become relevant. This may be done starting from conditions from many years so that the average, called a climatology, hopefully represents a typical map for the particular month or day of the year. And then the last question, what do I do if I need absolute surface air temperatures and not anomalies? So. In 99.9% .9 of the cases, you'll find that anomalies are exactly what you need and not absolute temperatures. In the remaining cases, you have to pick one of the available climatologies and add the anomalies with respect to the proper base period to it. Now for the global mean, the most trusted models produce a value of roughly 14 degrees Celsius or about 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit, but it may easily be anywhere between 56 and 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and regionally, let alone locally, the situation is even worse. So again, I'm going to pose that question. Having heard all that, do you actually think that we can put confidence in these multi-trillion dollar schemes to stop climate change and keep below a 1.5 degree global average temperature? Or does that sound like baloney to you? I know to me, it sounds a lot like baloney. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.